Obviously, no one had ever heard of Wicked Good Cupcakes before they aired at 9 o'clock on a Friday night. Their sales prior to the show were about $24,000 a month. They were making no money. They air. In the next 36 hours, they sell almost $400,000 of cupcakes. Now, this was a huge surprise to us, all of us on Shark Tank, but it was the beginning of something we began to realize was very powerful. What is Shark Tank? It's the number one infomercial in the world. That's what it is. Now, their company, this is Tracy and Danny, mother, daughter, the husband worked at Fidelity in the tech department, and he asked the company for a favor to give enough capacity for all the thousands and hundreds of thousands of orders that would come in after the area. And they provided that for him, so he didn't lose a single order. The challenge was shipping all this stuff. Today, this is one of the highest volume cake companies as measured by FedEx. They're running at almost a million a month, making about 28% pre-tax on it. They're incredibly smart at this, but the real secret sauce of a Shark Tank is this, zero customer acquisition cost. What is the number one cost of any online business in America? Why do 90% of the startups in online fail? It's not the logistics, it's not shipping the product, it's the fact that the cost of acquiring the next customer is much higher than the lifetime value of that customer. What Shark Tank changes forever for these people is that it takes the customer acquisition cost down to zero. And that means 12 to 15% of their income statement is erased. It makes the marginal companies phenomenally successful. And that is why there's 100,000 applications for this season, season eight of Shark Tank, starting June 13th, being shot in Los Angeles. This company has done amazing things. It had seven employees when it aired. It now has over 40, 43 to be exact. So it's doing what we should do in America. Small businesses should grow jobs. That's exactly what it's done. Tracy and Danny are very smart. They know the more they appear on TV, the more they're going to get lower customer acquisition costs. And because they're so on trend, and they're such a wonderfully interesting mother-daughter team, they're on every week somewhere. They're reducing their customer acquisition costs. I'll share with you something really fascinating. By the end of season seven, I had over 27 portfolio companies. Today I have 32. And of course, as you know in venture capital, not everything works out. The truth is, since the history that we've been recording venture capital in America, which is the late 50s, basically the stats haven't changed. You make 10 investments, two are wildly successful, six are living dead, they never make money, you have to keep financing them, and two go out of business within two years. So basically, you have to make all your returns from 20%. In Shark Tank, we've almost achieved a 50-50. Half our companies are successful because we've reduced their customer acquisition costs to zero. But in my case, I found out something else that's rather unique. At the end of 2014, when we did the audit, my audit firm said, look, there's so many portfolio companies here, we're gonna have to do a means test to determine which one should be written off and which one should stay as assets on the balance sheet. Most sharks have set up their own venture capital companies. Mine is called O'Leary Ventures, run by a guy named Alex Kenji, who's a lawyer, an IP lawyer, a business school grad, and a Russian poet. He's a very strange dude. <laughs> but he's very good at what he does. We did this study, and the auditors came back to me and said, we're gonna try and tell you what the common attributes are about the companies that are returning capital so that you know what to invest in next time versus the ones that aren't. Here's what's so amazing. Not some of my returns, all of my returns have come from companies either owned or run by women. Now why is that? What is happening there? Remember, these are small cap companies, companies between the sales of five million to our biggest one is 385 million. There's that old adage that says, you want something done, give it to a busy woman. I think that's true in the case of small companies, the time allocation. But what I think is really going on is risk mitigation. In my case, what I found is that women set goals that are achievable. They set goals that are within
in the timelines that people can see them and achieve them, that boosts morale dramatically, and they mitigate risk by not taking too much of the capital and putting it into any one area. The result is a huge return of capital to me as the shareholder. And some, I'm a small shareholder, some I'm a very large one. And as a result, I've started to skew my investments these days to teams that are companies run by women because my returns are higher. I'm not into gender warfare, I don't care. I would invest in a goat if it gave me a return. It doesn't matter, but my point is, in America today, we are not raising women too high enough in the management structure because, not because of any other reason than performance. We should have a lot more women running companies, that's what I say, just on the basis of what I've seen. graduating engineering cohorts. I try and teach or, or ask the engineers, a third of the class, to start companies instead of working for somebody else. Here in America, we graduate about 49,000 engineers a year across all the disciplines in engineering, mechanical, electrical, chemical, etc. Over in China, 250,000. And they're not bad engineers over there anymore. So there's a big competition going on, and I'm trying to get our engineers to start companies, create proprietary technologies, sell them globally, etc. Now, there's three things I'm going to share with you, and if it's the only things you remember from this presentation, it's worth remembering these, because this is data from all around the world, again, going back to Shark Tank. Now, you should know that Shark Tank's a very successful television format in other countries. It's been on in England for 15 years. It's been on in Canada for 10 years. And it's been on here in America for eight. A professor a few years ago went, went back and looked at all the unedited tape. He was trying to figure out, is there anything that's common in any of the pitches that they can see for companies that get funded? In other words, this does not determine the outcome of the company. It doesn't know what's going to happen. It's just who got the checks and who didn't. You come in, you pitch, you ask for a quarter of a million dollars, you either get it or you don't. Are there, some, are there anything common amongst the companies that get the money? And it turns out there are. There are three elements in every geography. This is agnostic to where the company is, what its business is, who the people are. All three of these are present, so I'm going to share them with you. Number one, in every case where a company got funded, they were able to articulate the opportunity in 90 seconds or less. Hi, I'm from Cohasset, Massachusetts. I make cupcakes, I put them in a jar, I FedEx them to people. That's 18 seconds. I get it. It turns out in leadership or in management, the ability to articulate the opportunity, the direction, the sales pitch, whatever it is, is really important. People that ramble on and are still talking 18 minutes into their pitch and you still don't know what the opportunity is, they never get funded. This is really important. So articulate what you want from people and make it short and sweet. It's basically, in 80% of the cases, it was less than a minute. Number two, the people that got funded in 100% of the cases in all of the countries were able to explain why they were the right management team to execute the business plan. What experience did they have? Where did they come from? Why are they the right people? You should write a check. Why would they reduce risk? Had they failed before? Were they successful before? Did they know something about that industry? This takes a lot longer than 90 seconds, but it's an absolutely important element. And when these two things come together, and I've seen it happen multiple times, I can see the sharks on either side of me getting ready to pull their checkbooks out. Because when you get a team that knows where they're going and knows how to get there, that's an interesting investment. Now here's the killer. Here's the one that I teach all my engineers. This is the, I've seen this happen so many times. You're pitching. The sharks or the investors are sizzling like isotopes. They can't wait to get their offers out. There's just one more thing, just one more. You have to know your numbers. I have been in the room and watch people get to the point where all five sharks are going to write a check. And we ask, what's the size of the market? How fast is it growing? How many competitors are there? What's the break-even margins? What are the margins are when you double your volumes? If you don't know your numbers, 
who deserve to burn in hell.